Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can create multiple functions that have the same name as long as they have different parameter types. And I'll show you what I mean with a simple demonstration here. Let's say we want to create two functions um, that just display the value. So they output to the screen the value of the parameter and also uh, display the type. And so, for example, we'll have one thing called display that displays an integer and one that's the same. It's called display, but instead it also displays a double. And so here's our function two prototypes. You can see they have the same name and uh, the types here as well. Now, what we're going to do is in the definitions, we're going to actually hard code in uh, whether or not it's a string or a double. So below main here, I'll go ahead and define these two and we'll have display that accepts an integer just like in the prototype and we'll say integer and then the value and then a new line. And then we'll do the same thing for the double here. So we'll go ahead and output the hard code double and uh, so forth and then end it. Uh, now, when we want to call this function in main uh, to test it, it'll choose which one to call based on what we give it, what the actual parameter is. So if we call it display and pass it here, uh, for example, 10, that's an integer. So it'll know to call uh, this first function here, uh, which will display integer. Uh, let's try it out. So I'm going to switch to the command line and uh, go ahead and compile it. And then we can run it. And I call this overloading, which is the name for having multiple functions with the same name. And sure enough, it shows integer and then followed by 10. If we wanted to call our second function, I could pass it a double. So I'm just going to do 10.0 here uh, for demonstration purposes and call it. And sure enough, now it says double and it shows 10. So you can see the difference is it calling a different function based on the type of the parameter we give it. If we give it a double, then it'll go down and call the one that accepts a double. If we give it just an integer, then it'll run the one that accepts an integer. Now we can call both of them in the same fun in the same uh, program. So let's call it again, um, and this time I'll pass it, you know, uh, obviously a double. And so we can call both of them and see that output as well. Um, so you can see integer followed by double. And we can do this with any number of things. So I'm already including at the top string. Um, so let's go ahead and create a uh, prototype that'll accept a constant string reference. Remember when you're passing string parameters, it's a good idea to pass them as constant references because we want to avoid um, the copying of a large data value. And strings could potentially be pretty large because they hold a sequence of characters. So um, you can hold a large thing. So this makes it uh, unmodifiable by making it constant. And the reference again makes it so that we're avoiding the copy of something. Um, so now I'm going to just copy this here and uh, we'll pass it uh, some kind of string. So like hello world and that will call the function that displays a string now we still need to implement it so i'm just going to copy this prototype bring it down to the bottom and actually maybe i'll reuse um, this here and do string now let's see it work and it'll call all three of our functions one after another double integer and sure enough string now, another thing we might want to do, uh, since we got kind of some similar code here, is create a function that um, accepts two parameters called display, and uh, we'll display the type and the value. So, for example, I could do something like this, um, where I pass it a double and call it value, and then the constant string, and I'll call this one type. So let's go ahead and define this down at the bottom. And um, what we'll do is we'll write something generic here for the, um, for the thing where type is displayed followed by value. And what I'm thinking, actually this should be a double, uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, we could actually use this um, inside our function here. So we could have one display, call another display. Check this out. So we could call, well, before we do that, let's just demonstrate it. So uh, I'm gonna call, uh, display here and I'm going to pass it two parameters um, so I'll do uh, like this and then the string value and we'll say uh, maybe something slightly different this is a double followed by a semicolon now it's going to know to call this per, this function is going to call this one with two parameters because of 
the fact that it accepts two parameters and the first one is a double and the second one is an integer. Um, and so we can have also uh, functions overloading that have different numbers of parameters. Um, now, well, let's, let's go ahead and test it and then I'll, I'll explain a little bit more. So sure enough, now the last one says this is a double. And what we could do is we could utilize this to simplify our other code here. Um, so for example, um, in this function here that accepts a double, um, instead I'll call my other display function. So I'll have a display calling display. And so here we'll pass it our value and pass it double. And I actually could use this for um, the first one as well, um, accepting an integer. So we could say value and pass it integer. Uh, so kind of simplifies our code a little bit for those two. Uh, let's go back and make sure it outputs the same stuff. And sure enough, we get the same output as before. The nice thing about that is we can actually just change this one spot here. Um, for example, if I wanted um, this, just change it to uh, sort of a different type of syntax. Uh, so this type is... Um, then when we go back and compile it, it'll change both of those function calls. Now it says this integer is one and this double is 1.12145. Uh, so a little bit there. Uh, so you can overload functions with the same name uh, given the number of parameters or the types of parameters. Now it chooses which function to call based on its signature. So that's an important term to remember. Um, so the signature is the name and the type of the parameter. Um, and that's it. Uh, so for example, here, um, it'll choose based on the name and the fact that it accepts a double or name and the fact that it accepts an integer. And that's it. It doesn't care what this is named. This could be anything that doesn't affect what it chooses um, or the return type. The return type is not part of the signature. Um, so we cannot have two functions. For example, if I create another prototype here uh, that both have the same parameters and the same name, um, the same parameter types and the same name, but different return types. Um, so this won't compile. You this is too ambiguous. It doesn't know which one to use uh, when we call this here. So it could call either, um, but it doesn't choose based on the return type. Because think about it, we don't actually pass it a return type here. We just give it a name and the actual parameters we're testing with. Um, so bear that in mind. Um, can't do something like this because it, the signature only includes the name and the type of the parameters. Let's, uh, let's think about another example. So suppose we want to uh, create two functions um, that are um, going to choose the largest of multiple numbers. Um, so let's create a function um, that uh, accepts the largest of two numbers. I'm going to write a quick prototype here. Uh, so returns the larger of two numbers. And uh, this will just be a double. We'll just go with doubles. And so uh, we'll accept two doubles and return the larger. And we'll do the same kind of thing with three numbers. Um, and so we'll have a setup uh, that works for that as well. And I'm just going to copy um, this prototype um, and add a third parameter to it uh, for, for here. So we'll have double num three as well. And we can go down and define these um, below main. And we're actually writing quite a lot of functions here. They're all simple though. Um, so again, larger, largest, and it'll accept uh, two parameters. And um, no, if num1 is greater than num2, then we'll go ahead and return num1. Otherwise, we'll just return num2. So this is a pretty simple setup for uh, the first function. Second function gets a little bit complicated if we don't choose to use this function as part of its definition. Um, but you can see, um, we could easily, oops, I, I called this one largest. Uh, let's go ahead and change these to match. Oh no, those match, okay. I thought it called it larger up there. Um, so we could call this function um, largest and pass it two numbers uh, and they could be doubles, right? Because we're passing it doubles. And so this one should return the second of the two. We could call it again and uh, pass it maybe something bigger here and then something smaller here. Um, and uh, that should work as well. And actually, let's put these in C out statements so that way we can see the results because these ones aren't actually outputting um, anything different. And I'll just copy and paste it like that. So this will compile because we haven't uh, we haven't actually defined largest yet, um, but it should still compile. Again, it's always a good idea to double check your work regularly. Um, and so we can actually run it um, and you can see uh, 
345 is the biggest of the first one and then obviously this is a pretty big number for the second one so yeah 345 is bigger and then this number is bigger in the second one so that that code seems to be working based on our limited testing um, let's go ahead and write the largest that accepts three parameters um, and we'll do it the hard way first <laughs> so uh, first we'll uh, start with our function header copy from the prototype and what i'm going to do is i'm going to first just look at uh, uh, num1 and compare it and see if it's the largest. So first we'll say is num1 larger than number two? And if it is, then let's see if it's larger than num3. And if it is, then we'll return num1, else it's gotta be num3. Uh, so so this does two sets of comparisons and we need that because we got three numbers. Um, however, we still need to check to see if number two is the largest, it could be. Um, so we'll add an else to this bottom set here um, and we'll say else if num2 is greater than num3, uh, then let's go ahead and return num2 because it's got to be the biggest. Uh, otherwise, we'll return num3. Now, just to, this is all the code we need and it's quite lengthy, but let's just figure this out. So if we don't enter this if statement, then we know that num2 is greater than num1. And so in here, in the else, we know that num2 is greater than num1. So all we have to do is make sure that it's also greater than num3. If so, we'll return num2. If not, uh, then it's got to be num3 because we know that num2 is the biggest. Um, so this code uh, should work fine for all cases. It's a little bit long, and we can actually shorten it by noting that um, this else statement here, where it returns num3, is the same as this one here. Um, and think about it this way. Here, we, sh we decided that num1 is bigger than something. Otherwise, uh, we can check here that num2 is bigger than something right here. Otherwise, it's got to be num3. Um, and so what I can do is add a return statement here for num3 and simplify this code a little bit by getting rid of this else statement. So it's a little bit shorter. We can almost fit it on this page as I'm zoomed in here. Um, yeah, so this is the whole function body. Um, so again, if num1 is greater than num2 and greater than num3, then we'll return num1. Otherwise, if num2 is greater than num3, then we'll return 2. Otherwise, it's got to be, num3 has got to be the biggest. Um, so that's a little bit shorter. But note also, we can write this even more succinctly if we use uh, this function here that determines the larger of two numbers. So check this out. So I'm going to um, create a variable. Uh, I'm going to just get rid of all that. Um, and I'm going to create a variable called max just temporarily. Uh, and we'll call the largest and we'll pass it num1 and num2. And uh, this will return the largest of those two numbers. And so then we'll take that number and uh, see if it is um, the biggest uh, compared to num3. So we can say, you know, is max and num num3 the largest. Um, and then finally, we can return the maximum largest. Uh, so this will work as well. So check this out. I'm getting the biggest of these two numbers, and then we're comparing that with the third number um, in this line of code here and returning it. We can also simplify this by just putting this in the return statement instead of storing it back in max. Uh, we'll just return it. Whoops, we'll return it here. Um, that gets rid of this line of code. And also, instead of creating this variable and storing it temporarily, we could also make this function call go right here. So we can call a function that'll return, and as part of that, we'll return, uh, will pa be passed to the second call of largest. Um, so yeah, check this out. This is really succinct, clean code um, that does what we want um, compared to that very long version of the function I wrote first. Uh, so let's test it out. So in main here, um, we can go ahead and pass it a three parameter version. And maybe I'll just um, make something up here. Yeah, and uh, I guess I should have a comment here because um, we're not actually showing the type of each parameter anymore. This is something different. So we're displaying uh, the largest of some example numbers. Um, I guess that's a good enough comment. Let's go back and see it run. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear, um, clear the screen compile it, run it, and sure enough, here's our function call, and that's the biggest, three with all the fives. Um, it's definitely bigger than these twos. Um, we can make it even more simple here. Um, and let's, let's try a couple other tests. So we'll do um, maybe one, three, negative one, and then maybe three, negative one, and I guess we'll make it a really big number. So this should output three and three, and the first number will be big. The first number will be a big one. All right, let's let's test it out. Make sure it works. Sure enough, three twice after 
uh, the initial run we did. Um, so these threes here are that example output. So pretty cool. You can have multiple functions with the same name as long as the signatures are different being the parameter types. Um, and so you can have um, functions that have different parameter types, like we have a double and a string here, as a or a different number of them. So like here, we've got a constant string compared to um, a constant um, or a double. Uh, so a constant string versus a double, um, it can tell which one to call. This one's gonna call the string one, this one's gonna call the double one. Um, so that's function overloading, pretty simple. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions.